Well, let's start with the little ones. How about mice? Are there different kinds of mice? And there are a couple of species of mice. They got, just like Mickey, they got big ears and, and a big long tail. And these are just two examples of the same species. Um, there are a couple of species, they look like this. So mice are they're climbers, they like to invade buildings. Uh, they also live outside um, in forests and in pretty much anywhere, they, they, they live anywhere. Uh, so this is uh, uh, deer mice, uh, white-footed mouse, uh, are common names for, for these creatures. Um, there are also house mice, and I only have a, I have a terrible, one terrible span, sample of this, and it, it's not much, but you can see it's got big ears, just like, uh, you, just like the other mice did. House mice are commensal. They live with people. And then we have something most folks call field mice, which aren't really mice. They're voles. That's with a V, V-O-L-E. And voles, I brought two examples here, because one's kind of chubby. Uh, you know, that's what they get like when they're really old, and then uh, the younger ones, of course, are a little thinner. But voles, let's see if I can hold it still, voles, unlike mice, have, have pretty small ears, they're barely longer than the fur, and a, a fairly short tail, maybe twice the size, twice the length of their, their feet. And so voles uh, are in usually grassy areas, more grassy areas, and they tend not to be climbers. So if you find a small little rodent in your garage, it could be either a vole or a mouse, but if he's inside the house, he's almost always a mouse because it, he had to climb to get into the house. For the most part, the mice eat about the same thing. They just live in different environments. You know, again, voles more of a grassland environment, mice more of a, well, almost anywhere, but typically more forest. Which ones tend to chew the bark off of our trees? So almost any small rodent will chew the bark off of the tree. and, and Typically, that happens in winter time. You know, most folks report this. They mostly report it in March and April when they get out to see the damage. But when it happens, is usually during winter. And if you were living in the middle of winter, outside in Minnesota, pretty much anything that tasted good and had calories would look pretty darn fine. So there are animals that don't climb. So it happens usually under the snow, or they use the snow kind of as a scaffold and they work their way up and can chew essentially as high as the snow gets. And of course, if it's a thin barked tree, all the better because you don't have to chew your way through the protective layers. You can get to the cambium, you can get to that the, the sap uh, very readily. So uh, maples, fruit trees, you know, all good examples of something that are vulnerable. Um, as well as some pine trees, things like arborvitae and such are, are highly vulnerable. Um, and that's not probably because the sap tastes good, but because it has high calories, all the, all the, the, the resins and such have, uh, have burnable calories. And, and that's, you know, that's what they're looking for. They're, they're just looking to survive the winter. Is there anything that you can do or, uh, to protect the trees from these little fellows in the winter? Yeah, that's really hard uh, because damage often occurs uh, at a time of year when we're not regularly going out and inspecting our landscapes. Um, so knowing that you have a vole population ahead of time would be handy. Um, to, to protect the tree itself, about the only thing you can do is apply some sort of a hardware cloth cylinder, something that's protective. Um, and the reason I say that, I mean, you can buy sprays to put on them, they're a repellents, um, and repellents have uh, a variety of effectiveness. Um, if, if you really love that tree, I wouldn't use a repellent. I'd, I'd go with the physical, I'd, I'd go with the encapsulating or you know, putting a, a cylinder of hardware cloth around it so, with a small opening because these critters, and, and now, now it's gonna get a little, it's gonna get a little macabre uh, because again, from the Wildlife Museum, I brought, I brought a, a skull and you can see how small that skull is. Um, you know, a, a dime is about all the diameter that it would need to slide through uh, a welded wire, woven wire cloth, you know, or a hardware cloth. So you have to have a pretty small grid size to protect that tree from voles. If it's a rabbit, well, then any old grid size will do. Um, you could also be mindful of mulching your trees. Right? If you're a small mammal in Minnesota in February, you'd love to have the base of the thing you like to eat to have six inches of fresh mulch so that it's a great place to live. You've got all that insulation. You can burrow down in that and make a lovely home and be able to you know, wait out those February storms. So uh, I always caution folks, if you have a vole problem or a debarking problem, look at your mulch as well, because you, you might wanna maybe hold off on a really thick mulch in the fall, because that's just providing great habitat for, at least for these guys, the voles. Putting a, a cylinder of hardware cloth around it 
with a small opening because these critters, and, and now, now it's going to get a little, it's going to get a little macabre uh, because again from the Wildlife Museum I brought, I brought a, a skull and you can see how small that skull is. Um, you know, a, a dime is about all the diameter that it would need to slide through uh, a welded wire, woven wire cloth, you know, or a hardware cloth. So you have to have a pretty small grid size to protect that tree from voles. If it's a rabbit, well, then any old grid size will do. Um, you could also be mindful of mulching your trees. Right? If you're a small mammal in Minnesota in February, you'd love to have the base of the thing you like to eat to have six inches of fresh mulch so that it's a great place to live. You've got all that insulation. You can burrow down in that and make a lovely home and be able to you know, wait out those February storms. So uh, I always caution folks, if you have a vole problem or a debarking problem, look at your mulch as well, because you, you might want to maybe hold off on a really thick mulch in the fall, because that's just providing great habitat for, at least for these guys, the voles.